I cannot believe that I have been in tech for seven total years. From my first job in 2016 as a junior web developer, to getting my first mid-level position, to joining a large tech company, receiving RSUs, a lot of RSUs, to now working at a tech startup. This journey for me over the last seven years has been full of up and downs, and I've learned so much, in particular, this last year. So in this video, I'm gonna share with y'all with everything I've learned over my last seven years in tech. Let's get into it. But before we begin, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Coding Dojo. Coding Dojo is a coding bootcamp that helps people who want to get started with a career in tech become software developers by teaching everything from full stack development to even up and coming careers in cybersecurity, data science, and even data engineering, which are fields that actually I work in right now. Coding Dojo has spent considerable time researching tech to build a strong programming foundation through their three stack approach. While other boot camps focus on one stack and limit the learning difficulty to accommodate a larger class size, Coding Dojo's three stack curriculum provides graduates with a comprehensive skill set and has helped nearly 9,000 other students land careers in tech post graduation. Students will develop the ability to learn new technologies and programming languages easily throughout their careers. Plain and simple, their curriculum is designed to make this the first and the last boot camp you ever attend. To learn more about Coding Dojo and what they have to offer, check out the link in the description below. Number one, do not join a company simply for the money. I spoke with software engineers who worked at Discord. I worked with engineers who work at Netflix, who work in machine learning at Amazon, who work for these big tech companies. And yes, they joined these companies because they wanted the money. But one thing that they all recommended was to not join a company just for the money but to join a company because you would actually enjoy the work that you're doing. That you join a company because you'll actually love working there, not just because you wanna reach that particular number. This is extremely important because I speak from experience. That there was a time I received two offers at once, okay? One company offering to pay me $180,000 a year base salary. Another company offering to pay me $160,000 a year base salary. What did I end up doing? I ended up joining the company that was paying me $180,000 a year over the company paying 160. That was a huge regret. I made a video on this because that company paying me $20,000 more, I ended up leaving after just two months. While I met the person that took the spot I was supposed to take at that company paying $160,000 a year, they're still there to this day and they're happy they haven't even been laid off. I'm not going to say that this is always the case. But I think it's important to remember that it's not always going to be greener on the other side. That yes, that extra $20,000 a year could mean an extra $500 to $1,000 per month for you. But is it worth it at the cost of your mental health? I understand that when you get that first job, whatever that first job is, when you're a junior developer trying to get your first tech job, you have no choice. And that's true. But as you move on in your career, as you gain more experience in tech, do not simply join a company just for the money. Join a company because you would actually enjoy being there, working there, and you'll be happy because your mental health is always number one. It's just easier in the long term for you. Number two, after being in tech for so many years, closer to a decade, when I joined tech, I was 27 years old. Okay, or maybe it was it 28? I'm 35 turning 36 now. And the biggest difference that I've noticed in my career versus year number one, two, three, and four is that it's now less about the coding. It's less about the Python, the SQL, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Next.js, you name it. But it's more about the solutions that you can solve. The more experience you gain in tech, or let me change it around, the longer you're in tech, the more experience you should gain. There are two types of developers that work in tech. The person that just glides, that just chills, that just sits back and relax working in tech. And this person number two, who is always trying to achieve more, who's trying to get the harder problems, who's not afraid to fail, taking on the harder, more challenging problems. Why is that more important? Because yes, you take on challenges you probably can't take on, or it's just, just above your limits, but it's okay you fail because the more you fail, the more you learn, 
The less you fail, the less you learn, the less valuable you become down the line. There are so many engineers who work in tech that I know who have coasted and stayed at the same company for five, six, seven years. I'm not saying that's bad, but most of the time they stay there because it's just easy and they're coasting and they don't take on the harder challenges. But then five, six, seven years down the line, the technology you know becomes outdated. The, to the technology you're comfortable becomes outdated or you're missing out an additional 100, 200, if not $300,000 you could have been making, but you're not making and can't make because you haven't experienced solving harder solutions. So why would someone pay you more if, if you can't do more despite the amount of years you have in tech? This is really important. It's not just about how much Python you know. It's about, okay, what can you do? What technical difficulties, what challenges did you solve that would make me want to take you and join my company and pay you $300,000 a year? Make that a goal rather than just only keeping a job but really more about how can I provide and make the biggest impact at my current position so I can get a better position later down the line. Number three, let's get into this. This is something that I learned after speaking to a senior software engineer that worked for Netflix. And the one thing he said was, don't grind. Don't just do leak code, just to do leak code. Right. Of course, there's a grind in everything when it comes to learning how to code, but don't just grind just to grind. Do it to have fun. Do it to learn. And he said something really interesting. And I'll, maybe I'll leave the clip on here, but he said, and I, I asked him, I asked him, why do you keep bringing up don't do something because it's just going to be a grind? And he said this, who wants to grind? Like when you're playing World of Warcraft and you have to farm this gear, you have to grind to get this much gold to buy the thing you want. At the end of the day, just like he said, who wants to grind? No, no one likes to just grind, but there's a way to turn coding into something that's actually fun where, okay, I know I have to do this, but how can I do this where I have more fun? For example, I'm a JavaScript developer and I'm learning more Python on SQL now. What can I do to make this fun? Well, for example, rather than just learning SQL just to learn SQL, I'm not going to learn all the basics and the difficult parts of SQL, but I'm just going to build something instead. Let's see what can I do to duplicate this data, the micro data from point A to point B. I'm learning Python. Let's see what I can build with Python rather than just only learning Python. Even though I don't know everything about Python yet, I'm actually having fun building something I want to build. Don't just grind just to grind. Try to make it fun and you will last so much longer in this game. Last but not least, I want to talk about something very important, which is this. Make sure you don't waste your time learning too many things. And what I mean by this is look at where you want to be in your career and figure out what it is you need to get there. You want to be a machine learning engineer at FANG? Then what is required to get there to get a junior position? You need to learn a lot of leak code and that is your number one priority. If you're not good at leak code, no one's gonna give you the job at FANG. Or if you wanna be become a machine learning engineer at a startup, then it's not about, it's less about leak code and more about do you know how to build models? Do you know how to build a particular data pipeline? It's more about do you actually know how to build things? And that's exactly the differentiation between joining a FANG or joining a startup. A startup needs people who can contribute right away, Fang, they're a little bit more lenient and they just need people that show some potential that doesn't know as much as a mid-level or senior engineer so they can actually teach them much more easily than someone who thinks they know everything. Right? This is extremely important. Last but not least, if you're here, please let me know if you make it to this last part. What I'm very, very passionate about is this. The further you make in the tech, the more money you make, hopefully. But the more money you make, the more money you tend to spend. Why am I sharing this? Because this is my biggest regret in tech to this day. After being in tech for seven years, I've made well over a million dollars. I've spent most of it. I spent most of it. Why? Because growing up poor, struggling all your life, when you're poor, living in a car and you're hungry, you can only dream of the things that you can never have. But when that bag is given to you, all you can think of is those things you could never have and you can buy. I bought, I rented an expensive apartment at, in a penthouse in Nashville. I bought a Porsche. Now I have a Tesla. Uh, I don't regret the Tesla though, right? I bought multiple cars. I bought the greatest and latest tech gaming computers, these TVs, you name it, this Italian leather couch, right? I bought everything. But now that money's gone. Biggest regret. 
why is this so important? We look at celebrities who make millions of dollars, NBA players, superstars, and then we hear stories about how later down the life, 10, 15 down, years down later, even though they made so much money, they had nothing to show for it. They started living in the streets. That was me, right? That was my biggest regret. Now I made it a go. I paid off all my debt, all my credit cards in just a matter of months, right? Now I have more cash than I could dream of because why? I live on like $500 more than half of my income, right? So about half of my check every month just goes to savings, just goes to investments, maxing out my 401k. That is the best thing you can do with your money because the moment you spend all that money, it's gone. Like what my homie Trash, right? His name is Chris from Netflix said, making so much money. He said, I know this can be taken away like that. I know I can lose my job like that. This might be the only time I ever make this much money. It could be gone like that. You never know and everyone eventually gets laid off in tech. Make sure you have money that can at least save you as an emergency fund, right? So these are the things I learned in tech after seven years. If there's anything I miss, y'all, please let me know. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.